I think we had a better set of nominees for the shorts than for the feature length documentaries this year. Hey everybody, welcome to Mainly Movies. Today we're going to be continuing with some long-form Oscar-related content. Most people typically see at least some of the movies nominated for Best Picture, or the acting categories, but there are some categories that tend to go under the radar for the majority of people, none more so than the short films. There are three short film categories, and although they do get released in theaters, they don't make it out everywhere. The indie theater I go to was showing all the shorts on the big screen again this year, and since it's a few hours drive for me, I once again spent nearly eight hours straight in the theater watching them back to back to back. Just like the last several years, I'm doing a three-part rankography series to give everybody a sense of these shorts. So even if you don't have a chance to make it out to see them for yourself, you can get a sense of what they're about. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for a variety of movie-related content like reviews, rank lists, and trailer reactions. I've already talked about the animated shorts, so next up in my 2023 Oscar-nominated shorts rankography series, documentaries. Of the three shorts categories, this one always seems to be the most underseen and difficult to track down, because it's shown in the fewest theaters. Last year, nearly all of the shorts were accessible online, but only a few are watchable outside of the shorts program this year. The five nominees are The Elephant Whisperers, Haul Out, How Do You Measure a Year, The Martha Mitchell Effect, and Stranger at the Gate. Since this is a rankography, I'm going to be ranking these shorts, but remember, this is just my ranking, not THE ranking, so be sure to post your own personal ranking of the 2023 Documentary Short Subject Oscar nominees in the comments below. Coming in at number five, Stranger at the Gate. This is a U.S. submission and was directed by Joshua Seftel. This short focuses on a racist former Marine with plans to commit a deadly hate crime in Muncie, Indiana. Okay, so this one is a very conflicting nominee. There are actually a lot of things I like about this short, and while I do think it probably had the best intentions, the way that the takeaway message ends up being framed is just mind-blowingly problematic. So even though it would probably otherwise end up sort of in the middle of my ranking, I've got to put it down in the number five spot. The presentation of the story certainly makes for an interesting and engaging short. It sets up an array of people and the scenario at the heart of the story, but what we end up seeing isn't necessarily the whole story, and that gets revealed to us over the course of the short in an unexpected way. And like I said, I think the short was made with the best intentions, because on one hand, you can view this as sort of an uplifting story about how people can change and how kindness reigns supreme over hate, Unfortunately, the way this gets framed puts the onus and responsibility for the outcome on the victim rather than the perpetrator, which doesn't really seem like it should be the takeaway message. Coming in at number four, How Do You Measure a Year? This is a U.S. submission and was directed by Jay Rosenblatt. Using 16 years of home video interview footage, this short explores the physical, emotional, and intellectual growth of the director's daughter from the age of 2 to 18. Only a year after the controversial Oscar-nominated short submission, When We Were Bullies, Jay Rosenblatt is back with another Oscar-nominated short. And somehow, he once again manages to turn a story about somebody else into one about himself. Rather than an unnamed classmate, this time his focal subject is his own daughter. In many ways, this barely feels like a documentary. Apart from a handful of intertitle cards, the sequence of home movie interviews that we watch is unannotated, leaving the clips to simply speak for themselves. There is something interesting about that type of approach, because in theory, that would allow the focus to actually be on the subject of the interviews. And in many instances here, that actually is the case. This short shines when we get to focus on Ella and the evolution of her answers, personality, and mannerisms through the years. We get to see her shifting interests and some of the things that she remains interested in throughout most of her life. We see stages of sudden maturity and intellectual growth. We see the ups and downs of her outlook on life, especially through her early and mid-teen years. What hurts this is Jay Rosenblatt's tendency to frame questions and clip choice in terms of himself. There is something to be said about wanting to get a sense of their relationship over the years, but as a documentary at least, this would have worked much better with a lot less Jay and better questions. Coming in at number three, 
The Elephant Whisperers. This is a joint Indian-US submission and was directed by Kartiki Gonsalves and is available on Netflix. This film focuses on a couple in a nature reserve in South India who dedicate their lives to raising orphaned elephants. As somebody with a degree in wildlife ecology who grew up watching Animal Planet, I'm just as surprised as you are to be putting this short in the third spot. This is a very nature and conservation focused film, which is something that I usually really like, so I'm not entirely sure why I didn't quite connect with this one. It is a bit long, which when watching this short on its own probably isn't as noticeable, but when packaged in the middle of a nearly three hour long shorts program, hinders its enjoyment a little bit. I think there might also be something about the dichotomy between the conservationist approach and the ankle chains that got to me a little, but as a whole, this was a very strong nominee, balancing cute baby elephants with the stories of the people trying to care for them. It's clear that Bonman and Bailey have a deep connection with these animals, and their passion for protecting them is inspiring. It's also great to see elephants presented in the light that they are in this film, because yes, they are incredibly cute, but this short also showcases how intelligent and empathetic they are too. Coming in at number two, Haul Out. This is a joint Russian-UK submission and was co-directed by the brother and sister duo of Maxim Arbogaev and Eugenia Arbogaeva. The short focuses on marine biologist Maxim Chakala as he studies walruses at a remote field station in Siberia. Of the two conservation and animal-centric shorts nominees this year, somehow I doubt that many people are going to put this one over the elephant whisperers, but I just found this one to be way more impactful. The style is quite a bit more sparse, and the Siberian Arctic setting isn't as lush and visually interesting as the jungles of South India, but this short manages to not only give us a front row seat to a very unique animal phenomenon, but it also provides some insight into the extremes that many field researchers need to go to in order to complete their research. This short starts off a bit slow, as we get a taste of Chakala's daily research routine, as well as the months-long isolation he endures each year. But then the subjects of his research arrive, and it is a remarkable thing. There's a reveal in this film that's as sudden as it is bizarre, but instantly makes the film much more engaging. Maybe not something you'd ever expect to say about watching walruses, or about watching a guy watch walruses, but it's true. There's an almost comedic quality to it at times, but the story never truly goes down that route, especially when the research is wrapping up and we're given some extra insight into the reasoning for the phenomenon that we witnessed. So that means my number one documentary short of 2023 is The Martha Mitchell Effect. This is a US submission, and it was co-directed by Anne Alverge and Deborah McClutchy, and is available on Netflix. This short tells the story of Martha Mitchell, wife of Richard Nixon's Attorney General, and her role as whistleblower during the Watergate scandal. As much as I love nature documentaries, I also have a soft spot for historical documentaries. As a kid, I watched the History Channel almost as much as I watched Animal Planet. Now, I'm not somebody who was even close to being alive at the time of Watergate, but I've watched and read enough things about the scandal that I have a pretty good sense of the sequence of events, as well as the major players. But somehow, I had never heard of Martha Mitchell. And so that in itself had me very interested in this documentary. Of the five nominees, this takes probably the most traditional approach to a documentary, overlaying historical context atop archival footage. It paints a picture of who Martha Mitchell was, and how she was viewed by the public and political insiders, but then tells the story of her association with the Watergate scandal, and how perceptions of her among different groups changed. It's a fascinating and frequently frustrating story that I found to be the most compelling and interesting of the bunch. All right, so that's my rankography of the 2023 Oscar nominees for Documentary Short Subject. Have you had a chance to see these documentary shorts? If so, what does your ranking look like? I'd love to see some reasoning for your order, so be sure to post it in the comments below. Also, be sure to check out my animated shorts rankography and stop back in a few days for the live action rankography, as well as some more Oscar related content like my ranking series of all 23 Oscar categories. All right, so if you got some enjoyment, insider information out of this rankography, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe if you're at it to see more videos like this, as well as movie reviews. Till next time, this has been Alyssa with Mainly Movies. The way life should be.